now guys before going further the next point that we are going to study is a what enthalpy of vaporization this one enthalpy of vaporization or what latent heat of vaporization and it is denoted by what h suffix fg hfg so before going further everyone give this heading only give this heading don't write anything just give this heading enthalpy of vaporization or latent heat of vaporization guys everyone give this heading now try to see the scenario here what is meant by enthalpy of vaporization or latent heat of vaporization guys this term is very very important for us huh? in our upcoming chapter chapter especially in case of the chapter heat transfer so now what is meant by enthalpy of vaporization or latent heat of vaporization suppose we have a 1 kg of saturated liquid and we want to convert that 1 kg of saturated liquid completely into what dry saturated vapor so our target is what we have what saturated liquid and we want to convert completely into saturated vapor guys and whatever the amount of energy we required for that conversion is called what enthalpy of vaporization or latent heat of vaporization so or vice versa guys vice versa means what suppose we have 1 kg dry saturated vapor and we want to convert completely into what 1 kg of saturated liquid and in that case we have to remove that heat this is also what our enthalpy of vaporization or latent heat of vaporization so how we will define enthalpy of vaporization just have a look at this definition guys have a look at this definition so it is defined as what everyone it is defined as what amount of energy required to convert 1 kg of saturated liquid to 1 kg of dry saturated vapor or vice versa vice versa means what dry saturated vapor to saturated liquid so for that conversion of 1 kg dry saturated vapor to 1 kg saturated liquid or 1 kg saturated liquid to 1 kg dry saturated vapor whatever the energy we require means liquid to vapor we have to supply or vapor to liquid we have to remove so that for that amount whatever the amount of energy we required for that 1 kg saturated liquid to 1 kg dry saturated vapor we will say it as a enthalpy vaporization or latent heat of vaporization guys getting my point so before going further please everyone after this heading if you are not given the heading give this heading and start writing down this discussion of the enthalpy of vaporization please everyone write down this discussion and while writing don't write down the things blindly guys try to understand the meaning of each and every word guys i here try to understand the meaning of each and every word see amount of energy required to convert 1 kg of saturated liquid to 1 kg of dry saturated vapor or vice versa vice versa means what reverse way saturated liquid dry saturated vapor to dry saturated liquid so that's why here two arrows here saturated liquid to saturated vapor here this arrow saturated vapor to saturated liquid guys huh? so before going further please everyone write down this discussion now the next point that we are going to study is what enthalpy of fusion or latent heat of fusion and we denote by h fusion so before going further please everyone give this heading just give the heading don't write anything further everyone give the heading this one enthalpy of fusion or latent heat of fusion or h fusion guys everyone give this heading now what is meant by enthalpy of fusion or latent heat of fusion suppose we have what 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius what we have guys everyone 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius and we want to convert that 1 kg of water we want to convert that 1 kg of water we have to convert we want to convert this 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius to what 1 kg of ice at 0 degree celsius so whatever the amount of energy that we have to remove for this conversion we will say enthalpy of fusion or vice versa is what we have what 1 kg of ice at 0 degree celsius and we want to convert this into what 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius whatever the amount of energy we have to supply for that conversion we will say it as what enthalpy of fusion means what is the meaning of enthalpy of fusion enthalpy of fusion or latent heat of fusion means what we want to convert 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius to 1 kg of ice 
at 0 degree celsius whatever the amount of energy we remove we have to remove for this conversion we will say it as a enthalpy of fusion or we have what 1 kg of ice at 0 degree celsius and we want to convert this into what 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius and whatever the energy we have to supply for this conversion we will say it as a what enthalpy of fusion or latent heat of fusion so it is defined as what guys everyone enthalpy of fusion or latent heat of fusion is defined as what amount of energy required to convert 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius to 1 kg of ice at 0 degree celsius or vice versa guys or we will say amount of energy we will we can say required or remove guys huh? here I, I will write down in bracket remove guys huh? means that amount of energy we have to remove to convert 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius to 1 kg of ice at 0 degree celsius or vice versa guys that is meant by our enthalpy of fusion or latent heat of fusion guys huh? so before going further please everyone write down this discussion Now the next point that we are going to study is a saturation curve guys. What is meant by saturation curve we are going to understand here. But before that guys everyone we will go to the our TS diagram. If you remember our TS diagram of the phase change process just have a look here. TS diagram of the phase change process how we are going to approach for the TS diagram of the phase change process. And remember that that TS diagram is at constant pressure. Suppose particular pressure P what we have seen guys everyone. TS diagram for that particular pressure if you remember our discussion so we have seen TS diagram like this for the phase change process this is just imagine that this is for the particular pressure P guys huh? this is the particular pressure P1 we can say this is what the phase change process we have seen for the particular pressure P1 now just observe huh? so this state is what tell me what is this state guys can anyone help me what is this state saturated liquid what is this state dry saturated vapor guys huh? see if you remember our discussion I am coming back to the TS diagram guys that we already studied so this is the TS diagram we have studied guys everyone see this one guys huh? if you remember our discussion we have already studied phase change process on a TS diagram and I am drawing that same thing here guys huh? now so this is TS diagram for a particular pressure P1 now just imagine that I am going to draw another TS diagram for process for pressure P2 and P2 is what greater than P1 guys huh? P2 is what greater than P1 so what will happen guys observe the scenario here very simple discussion not that much difficult discussion so when we increase the pressure what is going to happen guys have a look at this drawing carefully don't write anything just listen my words carefully if you observe here guys huh, just observe both the drawings are what similar guys huh? if you observe both the drawings are what similar but the difference is what the region of this weight vapor region this is what a weight vapor region for the P1 pressure and this is for P2 pressure line and this is what a weight vapor region for what P2 pressure now if you observe these two regions guys what is the difference between these two regions if you observe carefully what is the difference between these two regions if you observe carefully we come to know that guys this region is what reducing then again I am increasing the pressure P3 which is greater than the P2 so what will happen guys observe for this region guys which region we are seeing P2 pressure this is for the what guys everyone P P3 pressure not P2 pressure guys my mistake so this is P3 again once we increase this region guys once we increase the pressure what will happen this region is what reducing guys huh? this weight vapor region is reducing here means at low pressure it it has a higher width again reducing at P2 pressure and P3 is higher than this one it is a smaller this region and then there is a one pressure at which we will we will not get a weight vapor guys at a one particular pressure guys everyone what will happen at a one particular pressure we will not get to this region we will not get to this region but means 
liquid directly get converts into steam if you remember our discussion of the phase change process guys everyone if you remember our discussion of the phase change process how the phase change process converted first of all we got a saturated means subcooled liquid then convert into saturated liquid then we got a wet vapor then dry saturated vapor and at the end superheated vapor means subcooled liquid to superheated vapor we gone step by step and in between we got it what wet vapor guys huh? we got it wet vapor but when our pressure is at what greater than the critical pressure or equal to critical pressure guys when our pressure is what greater than critical pressure or a critical pressure we will not get a wet vapor region directly liquid get converts into vapor directly guys there is a not a wet vapor region and that particular pressure we will say it as a what that particular pressure we will say it as a what critical pressure so what is the meaning of critical pressure guys the pressure the pressure at which the, the, the lowest value of pressure at which we will not get a wet vapor region guys we will not get a wet vapor and means if our pressure above that one liquid directly gets converts into vapor guys huh? means here if a pressure below that one if pressure below the critical pressure then we will get a what wet vapor region if pressure below the critical pressure we will get a what wet vapor region if pressure above the critical pressure no wet vapor guys huh? always remember this point so once we means see observe this one so if you are increasing the pressure increasing the pressure increasing the pressure what is going to happen guys everyone if you increasing the pressure increasing the pressure increasing the pressure what is going to happen here if you increasing the pressure what is going to happen this region is reducing 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 and at particular pressure there is no region of wet vapor there is a no region of what guys everyone there is a no region of wet vapor and that particular pressure at which we will not get means that is the lowest value of pressure at which we will not get a wet vapor directly liquid converts to vapor directly guys without a wet vapor that particular pressure we will see it as a critical pressure now tell me guys everyone what are this point what are this point guys everyone this this green color point guys what are this green color points this green color point denotes saturated liquid points and this point everyone this point we will say it is what critical point guys huh? what we will say this point is what our critical point so what we are going to do we are going to join this point guys everyone we are going to join this saturated liquid point observe it with the help of one smooth curve so here we joined saturated liquid point now this red color points guys observe what this red color point denote what this red color point denote guys this red color point denote dry saturated vapor points guys huh? what this red color points denote means this red color point is what dry saturated vapor at p1 pressure uh, dry saturated this red color point denote dry saturated point at p2 pressure this denote what and what we are going to do we are going to join this red color point with the critical point and again we will get a smooth curve on others on this side guys so this green color curve we will see it as a what guys saturation curve what is the meaning of this green curve guys everyone this green curve is meaning of green curve is what saturation curve means if our state on this side of the curve on this side we will get a what wet vapor if you are on on this side right hand side of this curve on this saturation curve we will say it as a what superheated curve we are not going to draw this um, this is a very bad drawing guys we will draw this one properly but i am explaining you what is the meaning of saturation curve here guys so this green curve is a what saturation curve left hand side of this one whatever if a state on this left hand side we will have a wet vapor if the state is what superheated vapor then it is on the right hand side and in between here we will get a what guys everyone this is what a wet vapor region getting a point try to understand the scenario here guys very simple discussion understanding the saturation curve is very very important for the refrigeration chapter guys huh? because the entire refrigeration chapter is totally depends on the saturation curve if you got the saturation curve properly so if you are not given the heading guys first of all give this heading guys everyone saturation curve everyone give this heading saturation curve and what we are going to do now how we are going to draw the saturation curve we are going to see see 
and how we are going to draw the saturation curve from the exam point of view that is very very important to us because the entire refrigeration chapter is totally depends on this saturation curve guys huh? and how we are going to we are not going to draw this bad drawing guys huh? see our entire subject means generally wherever possible guys we always to uh, we always try to draw pv ts we always try to in this chapter there is another type of drawing will come pressure enthalpy diagram in refrigeration chapter that we are going to start after this lecture so now we are going to see the ts diagram how we are going to draw the saturation curve on the ts diagram so see the scenario guys how we are going to draw the saturation curve see this one guys huh? this hill like a structure guys this hill like a structure denote what our saturation curve this topmost point of this curve guys huh? this topmost point of this curve tell me what this topmost point of this curve denote can anyone help me what this topmost point denote this topmost point denote critical point what is this topmost point denote guys everyone this topmost point denote critical point then we are going to draw what saturation lines so here i am going to draw what saturation line just imagine that this is what our p1 pressure line this is what our what p1 pressure line this is what a p1 pressure line and i am going to make this p1 pressure line is what dotted dotted guys and see the curve how i am drawing this is what our p1 pressure line and i am going to draw what dotted dotted then the next pressure line is what p2 pressure line so the next pressure line is what guys everyone is what our p2 pressure line and again i am going to make this p2 pressure line is what a dotted dotted observe the scenario here this is what our p2 pressure line then our third pressure line will be what guys our third pressure line will be what p3 pressure line so this will be what guys our p3 pressure line observe p3 pressure line and we are going to make it as a what again dotted dotted so p1 p2 p3 observe same guys huh? the way in which we have drawn here but just here we are drawing properly guys huh? so this is what our saturation curve what this curve denote guys everyone this is what our saturation curve this is what our p1 pressure line this is what our p2 pressure line this is what a p3 pressure line and here remember that p3 let me use little bit dark one so remember that here p3 is greater than p2 p2 is greater than the p1 guys huh? on this pressure line and this topmost point of the saturation curve is what we will say critical point and see here guys this side this side of this saturation curve this one here this side is consist of what on this line guys huh? everyone on this side this one i am highlighting in the yellow what this denote guys everyone that i am highlighting in the yellow on this one guys everyone here this consists of what saturated liquid points so this yeah. line we will say it as a what saturated liquid line what we will say guys everyone we will say it as a what saturated liquid line what we will say this yellow one saturated liquid line guys so observe this one so this is what our saturated liquid line then this one guys everyone this another highlighter i'm using this one guys here this on this line if you consider any point on this line we will get a what dry saturated vapor we on this line we will get a what guys this one another side of saturation curve this black one denote guys this entire is what our saturation curve this part of the saturation curve we will say it as what saturated liquid line this part of the saturation curve we will say it as what on this line guys everyone if you see this point can anyone tell me what is the state of this point guys everyone dry saturated vapor what is the state of this point guys dry saturated vapor what is the state of this point dry saturated vapor means if you consider any point on this line is what dry saturated vapor so what we will say the name of this line is what guys everyone dry saturated or saturated vapor line what we will say guys everyone this one is what our saturated
vapor line guys now what we will say this one as what this one is what our saturated line because if you see this one means how this line consists of what how we form this line by joining how we form this line guys by joining dry saturated vapor line by joining saturated vapor points at the different pressure at the p1 pressure p2 pressure so here so this point is what saturated vapor point dry saturated vapor point at p1 pressure this point is what dry saturated vapor point at p2 pressure this is what a dry saturated vapor point at p2 pressure so that's why we are saying it as a what saturated vapor line this line consists of what guys everyone saturated liquid line this point denote what saturated liquid point at a p1 pressure this point consists of what saturated liquid point at p2 pressure and this point consists of what saturated liquid point at p3 pressure so this line when is what this yellow that i have highlighted in yellow is what guys everyone saturated liquid line because this line this curve form with the help of saturated liquid points guys are huh? at a different pressure so our saturation curve consists of two things saturated liquid line and then saturated vapor line guys are huh? getting a point try to understand the scenario here we are discussing very very important point and the, this 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 temperature guys everyone the temperature at critical point guys are huh? temperature at what everyone temperature at critical point from that point i am going to draw one dotted dotted line guys everyone observe this dotted dotted line i am drawing to show the temperature of that particular point and that temperature we will say it as a what critical temperature what we will say guys everyone that temperature at the critical point we will say it as a what critical temperature that is we denote by what tcr how we denote guys everyone critical temperature we denote critical temperature by what tcr and pressure so this point pressure is what guys everyone how the pressure line we will draw there one minute let me use a paint line so this is what our guys are observe here so here suddenly we are converting that one guys let me draw that one properly so this one will be what guys our what this line denote critical pressure line this line denote what critical pressure line pcr so what is the meaning of tcr guys everyone tcr stand for what guys can anyone help me tcr stand for what critical temperature what is the meaning of tcr guys everyone tcr stand for what critical temperature what is the meaning of tcr tcr stand for what critical temperature and what is the meaning of pcr guys everyone pcr will be what critical pressure what is the meaning of cri pcr critical pressure now one important point for all of you guys if you observe this superheated steam table guys everyone this superheated steam table is not going below above the what guys everyone not going above this point guys everyone 2 to 1.2 because why it is not going above this point everyone if you go above this 2 to 1.2 everyone if you go above this 2 to 1 point pressure 2 to 1 point 2 pressure 2 to 1 point 2 bar pressure then we will get a what guys everyone we will get a what we will go into the region of what we will go outside the saturation curve region means we will go outside outside this region guys huh? we will go in this region and we don't like in case of refrigeration chapter our entire discussion is within this region guys means either means below the critical pressure guys huh? our entire discussion is what below the critical pressure if you go above the critical pressure we will not get a wet vapor region liquid directly converts into what saturated liquid guys huh? see i'm telling you this is a little bit difficult point guys to understand so my suggestion is what try to watch these things two to three times or try to understand the meaning of each and every point guys huh? try to watch this one or try to listen this lectures or watch this lectures two to three times guys at least huh? if you are unable to understand still if you have doubt please ask me guys huh? so now so this region guys huh? inside this saturated inside this saturation curve this entire curve is what saturation curve guys this entire black one it consists of two part saturated liquid line saturated vapor line so inside this one we will say it as what we will say it as a what wet vapor region what we will say guys everyone this region is what wet vapor region then this 
left hand side of saturated vapor line this region is what this is what guys everyone superheated what this region guys everyone superheated vapor what we will say guys everyone superheated vapor region and in this region we will say it as what here we will get a what subcooled liquid guys huh? so here superheated vapor region and this is what our subcooled liquid region guys getting my point try to understand the scenario here very very simple discussion guys not that dis difficult discussion so before going further what you have to do guys everyone and always remember that here always remember that here guys our this one guys here p3 greater than the p2 p2 greater than the what guys everyone p1 huh? so so before going further please everyone write down this discussion guys first of all give this heading saturation curve no need to draw this curve guys this is the curve that i have explained you how we got this saturation curve and this saturation curve consists of two part this side part is what saturated liquid line this side part is what this side part is what saturated vapor line inside this saturation curve we will have a wet vapor on left hand side of the saturation curve we will have a subcooled liquid region and right hand side of this one we will have a what superheated vapor region if our point this 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 red color point this one guys this red one on this yellow highlighter this points you know what saturated liquid points and this side red point guys everyone this side red point you know what dry saturated vapor point guys huh? always remember this discussion so before going further everyone what you have to do draw this figure properly guys everyone before going further please draw this figure after giving this heading guys huh? don't forget to give this heading saturation curve if you are not given and draw this figure guys properly everyone after this drawing guys please write down tcr and pcr guys huh? everyone write down this discussion tcr critical temperature pcr critical pressure no need to write down their definition guys we don't need their definition so that's why i'm not writing now so in this way we completed our property table discussion guys if you have any doubt feel free to ask me put me a message and i can answer your doubt guys huh? everyone so that's for now for this lecture guys